All right, I'm back on this uh, 788 Remington after letting this finish dry for a few days and letting the Super Bowl happen. <laughs> uh, yeah, once once deer season and the Super Bowl is over, I'm ready for spring. Um, <clears throat> I'm sanding this with some 400. I've changed from 320 to 400. And I'm using a foam-backed sandpaper. This stuff is made by a company called Festool. Uh, it's available from uh, in Chattanooga, where I buy mine. It's available at a Woodcraft store, which Woodcraft is a national chain. This is 400. This right here is a piece of 600. And that foam backing on there allows you to, uh, it, it kind of evens things out. It just really produces a good stuff, a good finish. And another thing is, this stuff can be washed with uh, water. You can rinse it out, like wet or dry paper, and reuse it for a pretty good while. Stuff lasts forever. It's only like, I think, 50 cents a sheet. They got it in a big roll with these little perforated edges. You just tear it off like paper towels. After I get done sanding this, I'll take compressed air and blow the dust off, and then I'll take a, a tack rag dampened with mineral spirits and lightly get any more dust off and then I'll take that compressed air and blow it again and then I'll let my dust in my shop settle down and then I'll come back and finish this. Now right now it's about 60 degrees in here so it's a little tiny bit on the cool side to be, uh, be putting this finish on it. It'll work, it just takes longer to dry I really like for it to be about 65 or 70. If it's too hot, in the summertime I have a problem with it drying so fast that it'll pull as I'm putting it on with a brush or my hands. It'll start drying before I'm done with rubbing that section out and, and you'll start getting pull marks, drag marks, where it, it just uh, it, it's just too quick. I guess a person could put some retarder in it, but I don't... I don't know that. I've never tried to do that. You see me going in circles or across the grain and hurt hard to get to two areas. Keep in mind that the grain is not what you're sanding. You're sanding the finish. The finish doesn't have a grain unless you sand through the finish, in which case you have bigger problems. I like going in ovals against this back of the, the, pat, the, back of the stock area instead of just going in complete straight lines all the time. I'll, I'll go in long ovals. Now where this butt pad goes, it's got plenty of sealer on it and in it. But I'm still going to sand it because I want the next coat to stick. Sanding doesn't just smooth it up more or just um, fill up the grain. Sanding actually scuffs the, the previous coat to where the the next coat will stick. It needs to be scuffed. You don't want to put finish over something slick and shiny. And this 400 is as fine as it is, it's still doing the job of scuffing that last coat up. It just makes it bond better. You can see the outline of the checkering pattern with that white dust in there. When you sand with 400, well any, any grit, you're going to create dust and it's, it's like baby powder, it's like talcum powder and that goes into that groove. You don't want to leave it in there because if you leave it and the next coat goes on it it bonds with it and it'll just fill that up. You don't you don't want to fill that up. I mean, you're going to have to cut it out anyway but you don't want it excessively filled up. So that's the reason I take compressed air and blow that out with an air hose. I have probably 10 coats to finish on that stock all with a brush. I was going to spray it but it, this last coat turned out so good, I'm just going to leave it like that, let it dry, and then buff it. I, I like them a little duller than that for a hunting rifle. That's a little too glossy for me. But I've got it cradled up. I built this cradle several years ago when I was recovering from a triple hernia surgery and couldn't work, so I, I welded this up. But uh, <clears throat> the stainless part, the metal part, is what I added 
uh, as I as I said when I was recovering from surgery, the wooden part, the the tape, the seat, to and the, the tool holder, I made I don't know 45 years ago, but the metal part I added. I used to have a four by four oak where this round I don't know what that is two inch I guess. And the 4x4, four four, I had it where it would slide a little bit. This one will slide from end to end. It, as far as that tube is, I can loosen these nuts, and this will relax. I, I made this and then cut a slot out of it, and then welded those ears on it, and then sprung it open where it, this thing will slide when I loosen those. Same thing with this up here. Same kind of a deal. So where I have infinite adjustment on this one. The other one I had just a little bit of adjustment down here, travel that way. It wouldn't, uh, none of this, these ends would, would spin around, whereas these would go 360 degrees around. And so this is a whole lot more adjustable. I can put anything in there. I can put a thimble in there and checker it. So anyway, I've got it, I've got it chucked up in my cradle. I'm going to start with the grip checkering. I've got my outlines, you can see my, my outlines there, my master lines, I cut those in before I put started putting any of the finish on it. Right, I'm going with 22 lines per inch checkering. This is my first cut. Start with my master line, I'm going to take a single cutter and just barely, 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 just scratch the finish out of it, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to define it. Make sure it's good and clear from one end to the other. And then I start with a, a two line cutter on my first pass. I put one cutter in that single groove. And the next cutter will cut a new line. And I've cut this very lightly, extremely light. I don't I don't want to cut a, a big deep groove yet. There's such a curve right here that the grain is going I can go that direction on this side of the hump and on this side of the hump I got to go the other way because that that hump is so abrupt. So what I'm going to do is do a bunch of these going that way and then I'll flip it around and come back this way and clean them up, extend those lines back. All right, now if I get one line one new line cut in there, then I'll use my triple cutter like that it cuts three lines grain is starting to work against me right here. When I turn this around to 
pleat these lines here. I'm going to finish this up here because that grain is starting to get a little, just a little bit squirrely. I'm, I'm cutting into it. When you cut into grain, it tends to bounce the tool. And bouncing tends to make it get off. It's, it's not on track anymore. It's like if you're on a, a rough road on your car and you're going too fast and your front tires are bouncing so bad you have a hard time steering. One pass, first cut. You can see how shallow those lines are. They're just scratched. See, those lines are just barely scratched in there. Not heavy at all. It's, I found it harder to cut the line completely on one pass. I, I find that my my lines stay closer to straight if I'm just barely scratching. Now this next master line is here. And I'll start and cut. I'll clean that one up with a single cutter. And then I'll put a double cutter in there and make two lines. And I'll put a triple cutter and make three. And then I'll advance. I'll go this way and then I'll finish up this way. And that'll be both lines cut once. And then I just deepen them. Meet Joe. Jojo for short. He's old. He'll be 12 here in about 10 days. He's got to where he's kind of losing his hearing a little bit. But he is still Jojo the Wonder Dog. The best dog I ever had. He wandered up to our place when he was about six, seven weeks old and He's been here for nearly 12 years. He likes to be wherever I am. So pardon his barking every now and then. Whenever uh, you hear barking on the video. He thinks he's hearing something outside and he's bound and determined to let me know about it. He's a good boy. Well, thanks for choosing to spend your time here with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this program. I'll try to post a new segment each weekend. In addition, if you'd like to read about a stock that I made and then it took a 20-foot freefall, click on the link at the bottom of this page. It's called The Broken Gun. It's a story I wrote a few years ago about my two boys. Sometimes life's hard and things get broken. Now and then we get a chance to fix them. I'm so grateful for the opportunity I had to repair this broken stock. It led to a restoration that I never could have imagined. As always, if you like this video, please click the like button and share this with your friends. Have a great day.